Hi, my name is Ryan Birkenholtz. This is a 2007 Dodge Durango, and today we're going to be changing the coolant. A word of warning, never do this after you've been driving the vehicle or if the coolant's hot. Um, coolant systems operate under pressure, and it's only safe to open it up if you have not driven it for a while. About the only things you're going to need to change the coolant are uh, new coolant, and a container to drain the coolant in. Um, I'm going to be using a hose as well with a hose clamp on the end to connect to the uh, radiator drain to make it a little bit easier to direct the spent coolant. You can also buy pre-mixed coolant. Um, I'm going to be mixing mine, so if you don't buy pre-mixed coolant, you also need some distilled water. You can get this in any grocery store. Just make sure it's distilled um, and it should be set. You can look up to see how much coolant you need in your owner's manual. Uh, my vehicle is a 5.7 liter with rear heat, which means I need 16.6 quarts of coolant. Um, so I've got 3 gallons here, 4 quarts per gallon, so I've got 12 quarts of coolant um, times 2 because I have to dilute it. That means I've got 24 quarts, which is more than I need, but if I only had 2 gallons, I wouldn't have quite enough to replace the coolant. So. Let's get started. All right, first we're gonna just open the radiator just to make sure that there's no pressure. Uh, and like I said earlier, don't do this if you've been driving it or if the radiator uh, is hot at all. Um, this is the location of the radiator cap. And let's take this off slowly. I'm gonna be wearing safety goggles just in case there's any pressure. We're gonna crack this pressure vent open a little bit there we go okay so there's definitely no pressure in the system I'm just gonna leave this here just so I don't drop anything in there and we'll move to the next step let me show you the location of the drain on the bottom of the radiator The radiator drain is located right here. Uh, I've put a little piece of hose on here to help drain. And this is the uh, valve. And when you open it, it will drain the radiator. And one thing I'll mention, the service manual actually recommends draining the engine block as well. Uh, there's a couple of engine block drain plugs. I'm not gonna be doing that. Um, I fear that they're probably seized in there. Um, I just don't want to mess with that. I'm just going to change as much of the coolant as I possibly can and we'll go from there. And before I start draining, I'm going to attach this piece of hose that I found in my workshop so that it makes draining into the bucket easier. And of course, if you could do this on a lift, it would be much easier. I'm going to put the other end of the hose in a five gallon bucket and make sure you secure the other end too so it doesn't go all over the place. The next step is simply to open up the radiator drain. Uh, I thought I was going to break this off the first time I messed with it, but the drain nut should rotate. If you were looking at it from the back, it would be counterclockwise. You need to rotate it 180 degrees and as soon as you do that it should be flowing there we go and we're going to let that drain going to take a little while with my setup here and let it drain. If you open that up and you're sure it's turned 180 degrees and it still doesn't come out, you might have uh, some gunk built up in there and you may have to take a wire and poke 
into the, the outlet and of course when you do that it's going to all come out at once as soon as it starts flowing but uh, I didn't have to do that in my case but that's a possibility. One thing that will make this drain faster is if you actually take off the radiator uh, pressure cap. I drained the radiator and uh, only got about a gallon and a half of coolant out um, which means there's still probably at least uh, two and a half, three gallons in the engine block and heater cores and, and other places. So I'm not sure if I'm going to drain the radiator block. I know I said I wasn't, but I may. Um, let me show you where the drain plugs are. Um, this is the passenger's side. And if you look in here, you'll see, you'll see a couple of nuts. There's one of them right back in here. Yeah, you see that uh, collared nut kind of behind that red wire? And then there's another similar looking one right here kind of back behind the engine mount, screwing right into the engine block. Those are the coolant drain plugs, I believe. I haven't taken them off. I'm pretty sure they are, though. And I think there's another set of them on the other side of the motor, too. I haven't looked. I decided not to take the engine drain plugs out. Um, uh, to be honest, I wasn't sure 100% which ones they were, so I wasn't going to mess with it. Um, and since I got about two gallons out, so that's about eight quarts or half of the capacity, I just uh, thought that that's going to be good enough and I'll probably do the same procedure in a month or two um, and call that a, a good enough as far as a fluid change. <clears throat> so, and then I videotaped the rest of installing the, the new coolant, but um, then I accidentally deleted the, the footage, so I'll show you what I did. It's pretty simple. Again, this is the uh, pressure cap on the radiator. This is actually the engine coolant reservoir. So I filled the radiator up to the top, replaced that cap, and then I filled the coolant reservoir up to the max level. Um, and then what I'm going to do is drive it for a day or two. Um, and then check it again and make sure that I still got enough coolant because you might get some air coming out of the system uh, the first uh, few hours or few days of driving. So um, after that I'm going to check the, uh, the protection, uh, the temperature protection using a coolant gauge you can get anywhere and just make sure I'm protected down to, since I'm in Minnesota, I'll probably go down to negative 40 or so. Um, and then once again check and make sure I've got enough coolant in the reservoir and that should do it. Thanks for watching. One more thought about bleeding air from the system. Um, a lot of uh, service manuals may have an actual procedure to bleed air out of the coolant system. Uh, I didn't see one in the service manual for my vehicle so that's why I'm going to continue checking the reservoir to make sure that uh, uh, my coolant level is good enough. So if that's incorrect, if somebody knows if there is a better procedure or a, an established procedure to bleed air from this motor, um, please comment, but uh, I didn't see one in the official service manual.